I'm going to start this really quick with just a little tidbit, a little did you know, because I know that some people, um, well, most people know about, especially in the groups, the at everyone feature, um, basically where it says, you know, mentioned you in a thing and you can at everyone. And I know some people, I always see the people on Facebook that are like, I hate this feature. And I'm like, it's okay. If you don't like it, just leave the group then. But that being said, ooh, let me mute everybody on entry. I love it because it's a great way to keep people engaged, especially inside of groups. I appreciate when people do it to me because I'm like, oh, probably wouldn't have saw that if they didn't, you know, mention me. Um, but what you can do now on your, just your regular Facebook should be available to everybody. But if it's not available for you, just let me know. When you make a post or you go live or anything like that on your regular personal page, you can at your friends. So you just put at friends and it will mention all of your friends on your Facebook page. They'll get a little thing saying like, Aaron mentioned you, just like how you would if it was at everyone on a page, right? I'm about to use the heck out of that. I felt like that real, y'all about to be sick of me. <laughs> Cause I'm like, I'm gonna at friends on everything. It's just a great way to get people who are engaged, engaged and people maybe not engaged. My dog never barks until I start a Zoom. Never. It's just impressive the way that he just knows Zoom's going on. Um, I, I think because what I want to talk about today is leads. And I think it's so important to sometimes to kind of just go through this flow where there are going to be people who are engaging with your stuff. And maybe there are people that aren't. And we have to realize, too, that we don't need to be like all the time engaging with people. Like I know I, I probably... I'm um, just calling myself out on this. Sometimes I keep people like I try to keep engaging people. It's like bringing a horse to water that doesn't want to drink, right? Like I keep trying to engage people that I probably know are not going to work the business. Or um, sometimes I think to myself, like, why am I chasing this person? Like I made a post the other day. And I think that's what makes it so important about social media is learning how to attract and not chasing people. That's where when you're chasing, that's where people start getting burnt out because because you feel like you're begging, and I'm sure I can get an amen from lots of people, but you feel like you're begging people to buy product. Kristen, I love you. With your little poor arm, I hope it's feeling better. Um, but no one likes that feeling of like desperation. And Fraser Brooks said it like a long time ago, it's commission breath, right? Like you just feel like, especially towards the end of the month, and I know we're getting there-ish, but especially towards that time, people start feeling, ooh, super desperate. Like I have a goal to meet, like I'm running after people. Wouldn't you prefer to learn how to attract people to you than chase people? And I know it's a transition for people to learn how to do that, but think about, you know, all the things about you as a person, as a leader, as a mom, as a wife, as a business owner, a friend, a daughter, all that stuff, right? Wouldn't you prefer to use those things? So people come to you and say, Hey, Aaron, I'm just, I love your vibe. Like, I just want to do whatever you're doing. Right. And then you can offer your, your solution to them. Versus you going, hey, this is what I have. You need it. Oh my gosh. And you're kind of feeling like, oh my gosh, I am like literally begging this person. And I heard someone say this at a meeting we had last week. And he's like, if you have to beg people, especially in our business, right? Because most of us here have a solution for almost everything. But our major solution is helping people make money online, right? And he said this at a meeting. He's like, if you have to beg people to make money, you need to switch up your network. And when he said that to me, I was like, oh my gosh, you're right. Like who in the world doesn't, I've never met someone's like, no, I'm good. I have enough money. Even people who are loaded, right? They're like, oh no, no, I'll take more money wherever I can find it. Right. They're smart about it. So if you have to beg people really just step back for a second and go, okay, I need to switch up my network. And I'm going to help you with that today. Cause I want to talk all leads, lead generation, um, becoming a straight up lead magnet. It was really funny before I got on here. My I am app was I'm a magnet just I'm a magnet. And I was like, that's perfect. I'm a magnet to all things. Um, if anyone wants to help me get like, you know, a referral code for the I am, I probably would be just a millionaire from that at this point. I freaking love that app. And I recommend it to everyone the best. So if you're sitting here and you have no idea even what a lead is, you're like, what the heck is this girl even talking about? A lead is basically just any information that you get from somebody that, um, that they, that you can use to follow up with them. Right. So their name, they're where they work. Or if you guys are having a conversation, like one of my favorite things to do when I'm adding new people to my network is just a little connection message. 
And I keep it super simple in mine. You might have one too. And maybe I'll throw mine in the hustle and say group so that you can um, take it and make it your own if you're not, if you don't really already have one. But mine just says very simply like, hey, I'm Sydney. I'm a boy mom. I like to mess around with people. And I say that I'm a mom of two, a five-year-old and a 40, well, he's about to be 41 year old man, also known as my husband. Um, I like to joke like that because that's a part of my, my personality. So I like to keep a little joking around with people in there. I say like, I like working out in tacos. Those are my hobbies. Right. And then I say, what about you? And it gives people an opportunity to tell me a little bit about them. And then I can go, okay, they like maybe the same things. Um, maybe they, maybe they say they don't like tacos. And then I'm like, I don't trust you anymore. Get on my friends list. Joking, but it gives you an opportunity, right? To then, and I create something called a lead list. I'm super old school. I have like all the things online, but I love more than anything to have a bunch of different notebooks. I write people's names down. And then I have like, basically too, when I hear people say like, well, what's a lead list? It's the people that continuously I drip on. I engage with their stuff. I've probably already talked to them about business or opportunity. Um, if I haven't, I'm working to that point. And I know I've said it here a million times before. I build relationships, y'all, but I'm, we're, none of us are getting any younger. Please do not spend forever the next year, like just coddling this relationship you have with this person so that after a year you can be like, hey, this is the opportunity that I have, right? I usually go in after like second or third message. And I'm like, this is what I do. This is what I offer. And it's okay if they say no, no might mean not right now. Maybe you just need to educate them a little bit more on your opportunity. That's fine. But I, I don't like the small talk. I don't know about you guys, but I can't even do it in person with people. Um, I like to get like right to the point, like right to the things that we want to talk about or the things that you want to know about or they want to know about. So just remember too, a lead starts off as a conversation. It's not always like you prospecting like immediately, like most of the time. And I don't, this used to work when we first started our business seven years ago. You could go right into somebody's message. This is my business. This is my product. Do you want to try it? You didn't have to use their name. They didn't care. Now it takes a little bit more fluffing if you, where you're like letting, allowing it to lead to somewhere. And that's why on a previous episode, when we talked about attraction marketing, and I think what I'll do is I'll do a specific Wednesday, like just built on attraction marketing. I don't know why I got dark in here. Sorry. I feel like I'm there. Dirk. Um, I'll do one more just on attraction marketing to help um, just make that more understandable. Cause I know for me, even sometimes too, it's still a little, like it still feels a little awkward, I guess. Um, but one of the things that will help with your leads is attraction marketing. That's a, that's a huge way that I create lead generation is through attracting people through um, different ways. And I'll tell you, I have that at the end of my notes. Um, I do a lot of that on TikTok. So if you follow me on TikTok, you probably have no idea what I do or sell. That's the point. Like, that's the point. I want to attract people to um, ask me, hey, what is this? Because then you're adding them to your lead list. You have things you're dripping them up. And you have groups you're adding them to, or you have a script you're sending them or a video, right? Like instead of you just throwing spaghetti at the wall or posting and praying, that's my favorite thing because I know so many people, they're like, well, I posted on social media today. And and no one said anything. I'm like, yeah, well, that's kind of how that goes. It happens once in a great while, once in a great while. That's why I like live videos because you at least have the opportunity to be like, if you want more information, comment. And they can comment and then you can add them to your lead list. But a lot of the time you need to be building those conversations. And so there's a couple um, different kind of leads I want to share with you today. But just remember this whole conversation that we're going to have is it's your duty to turn the lead into a sale. Okay. That's like, that's between you and the lead. Once you get it, we're going to just talk like generating them today, bringing them to you. Um, cause I would say majority of the time, 99.9% .9 of the time people ask me anything about social media. Well, I was like, Oh, someone on my porch. Um, at, at anytime anyone asks me about social media, they ask me how to get more people to look at their stuff, how to get more people to engage with them. Um, you know, all of those things. And that's one thing that I, it's going to be different for everybody. It really is. I'm going to give you the stuff that works for me and that I see working for other people. Um, and the first one that I don't even really need to say, because I feel like I need actually need to get like a big sign back there is just consistently showing up. That's the first way. Okay. If you're not even consistently showing up, you start consistently showing up and you'll start generating more leads. 
people like you think about how are they going to ask what you have to offer or what you do or anything about you if they don't even see you if they don't even you're not even showing up they don't even know you're there or you know i think about um sometimes i just saw this in a girl on Instagram, and I'm going to actually post her in the Hustle and Slay page. I love her. She has um, very generic tips for all types of network marketers, but she talks about like just selling what she has in her stories only and attracting on her page, which I love because selling in your stories only is going to be just to your friends list, just to people that you should already be conversating with anyway. But if I just added you, right, or you just added me and I come to your page and it's Spamala all over, you know, all of these graphics from your company or there's no pictures of you or, um, you know, you've, you've got like a sale up from like last week and you haven't posted since then. I don't know about you guys, but I don't usually friend with people. That's not it's not like something I align with personally. I want more people who are just like showing up consistently, doing it like authentically, maybe posting like Kristen about their family and their kids' baseball games and, and that kind of stuff. I'm like, ooh, this person looks like they're my vibe, right? Like they would, they would be somebody that I would want in my tribe. So just think of these things as you go. If there is something about lead generation that works for you that I don't talk about today, like feel free to mention it in the comments. Um, what about lifestyle with product? Uh, do you mean like using those two things together in your stories? Sorry, in I'm reading your list. No, I'm sorry. Um, to put it in your stories. Yeah, for sure. I do like, I mean, I do a little bit of both. And again, it's just like what I think works for me, but I like doing more like selling in the stories as far as, and I'm going to talk to you guys about polls and questions and stuff like that. Um, talking more about like my product and opportunity in my stories, because I can, first of all, I can see who's watching all of them, right? That's why I love stories. If you don't do stories consistently, you're making your life really hard. <laughs> you can see every single person when you click your stories, right on the left-hand side, hundred and whatever viewers, all of those people, y'all, all of that is a lead list. They're all watching what you do. How many times do you see the same person on your stories? That person needs to go like top of your lead list. They are watching. And sometimes you have to remember there are people like me who will watch and watch and watch and watch. I'll probably go to Google 15 times. And I don't know if it's like what it is about my personality, but I'm going to wait for you to say something to me just the way I am. So remember that there might be people out there that are just waiting for you to be like, hey, I see you watching my stories. That's one of the scripts that we love to use here. Um, I see you watching my stories. Are you just a cheerleader? Or are you interested in more information? If they say just a cheerleader, wow, thank you so much for supporting me. I love that. Thank you. If they say I'm more interested in more information, you're probably bouncing off the walls like, yay, I'm so excited, right? But because you asked, sometimes that's all they need is just to be asked. So yeah, lifestyle posts, all that stuff. Like yesterday I did this post about um, inside my stories. I didn't even realize today when I was doing lead generation, exactly what I was doing yesterday until I did it. And I was like, that was smart, Sydney. It was attraction marketing plus lead generating. I talked about going back to my first therapy appointment. It's been a while. Um, and I said, you know, why do people like make it weird about going to therapy? Like everybody should go to therapy. Just it's like self-care, right? And my homework was something to do for self-care. So I made a little question box saying like, what's your favorite self-care? I had people messaging me that I've never talked to, telling me to go get a massage, read a book. One girl was like, take a slow walk on a beach. I was like, do you know I live in Michigan? I should go to like Jessica's house and walk next to her pool or something. I don't know. But it started a lot of conversations with people simply by asking, hey, what's a self-care thing you do? And I was open, honest, authentic with people. Um, I think that's what makes people, when you talk lifestyle, Kristen, like they want to see like exactly what's going on in your life. But just being like, hey, this is what I did today, um, you know, it gives them an opportunity to engage, especially when you're using things like the polls and the questions. That's one thing I'm going to talk about too. So let's go. I have so many notes and I just scrolled out really bad. <laughs> Squirrel. So lead generation is basically where you're collecting your leads. Okay. There's a, a couple of different parts of leads, but it's where you're collecting your leads. For most of that, that's going to be, for us, it's going to be social media. I know a lot of us who talk to people in person, like the Kristens, the Joeys, the Hasses, like that's your lead generation where you're doing that. Um, I personally like to grab leads from just social media, doing things like TikTok, doing things like lives or reels. Um, here's one thing I want to remind you about that, though. A lot of people, this might be a little bit of a rant, 
they get like excited when they have 5,000 views or a hundred play or a thousand plays on their reels. Um, I want to remind you that's lead generation, right? You're, you're getting people to look at your stuff, but is it quality leads? Okay. I don't remember who said this a long time ago, but OQP, only quality people. I actually have it written on my door, OQP. Just so I remember every day, I'm looking for quality people. Because you're going to have people that engage with your reels, your TikToks, your lives that are probably never going to engage with your business or, or anything that you're looking for, right? Like I see so many people that get excited about like 10,000 views on their reels or, or even, even a thousand views on your reels. Okay. Let's just whatever, however many is a lot to you. Okay. If no one says anything or no one questions and says, Hey, I want more information or no one messages you it's kind of pointless. Like, let's just be honest. And so many people get attached to, well, you had like, uh, someone was telling me the other day, you had like 12,000 views on that one reel. Great. That was awesome. Exciting for whom I didn't get anyone asking about anything. So for me, it was just like a chalk it up, like, cool. Yay. Looks nice. But it's like, I, I don't know, it's like driving a nice car that has no gas. Like, what's the point? I don't know. So think about that too. Like d- detach yourself. At my best times, I don't care if I have five views on a live. If one person says I want more information, I'm the, I'm the happiest camper that you've ever met. That's it for me, okay? So try to think more um, of creating leads that are actually going to be quality people through good content, through things like that, Okay. Um, lead nurturing. So once you get your lead list going and however you want to do it, paper, Trello, your phone, your notes, I don't care. Okay. Whatever works best for you. But if you don't have a lead list, like I feel like I'm giving you homework, make one. Okay. That's your homework for today. Make a lead list. And it literally can be as simple as a sheet of paper, but have at least 10 people that are on there that you're going. These are the people I'm talking to. If you take this business seriously and it's not a hobby for you and you're obsessed, like just talked on Monday, like you're obsessed and you want to do this, you should have a lead list. 10 is like a small number. 10 should be a super small number. You can go back to your your last post from last week and you should be able to grab 10 people off there to add your lead list. In the nurturing comes from you, like I am my daily list of people that are my lead list. I'm liking their posts. I'm usually commenting in their stories. I personally like to comment in the stories because then it starts a personal message with them on the side. It goes to like their DM and then there's an opportunity. It's like an icebreaker for me. I don't know. It's a way of like not being awkward and icebreaking it. I usually ask a question in their stories, goes right to their DM. Next thing you know, it's just them and I in there, right? Um, I can do simple things like the three, two, one, right? Going on their profile and liking a couple things, commenting on a couple things. Um, Just a nurturing, especially if you have events whether they're in person or online, or you have groups that you can add them to, things that you can tag them in, that's all a part of nurturing. And inviting to online events or inside of groups is an incredible way for your business for validation. Incredible. Like if you have a group where people are commenting a lot or there's videos being put up or there's something you can tag them in, um, just like we were talking in the beginning, you can at everyone now. So like if you put them in a group and you at mention them in a thing, or you put them in a group and someone puts in a video and they at everyone, they're getting a notification saying, hey, something going on over in this group. So nurturing them. Um, And then lead conversion is basically where you turn the people that you have on your lead list into customers, affiliates, promoters. I think that's what everybody wants, right? We're always looking to be able to help people to give them a solution that we have. So converting them. And again, when we get to conversion, right, that's your quality leads. Those are your quality people. And I think that when we think of quality people, right, like I know for me, I'm trying to say this like, mm, and not be offensive, but I I made a TikTok the other day, like sometimes people are just looking to be offended. So don't be that person right now. Um, But we sometimes want it for people more than they want it for themselves. And I'm just going to be the one to tell you that like, if you are offering and presenting an opportunity to someone and it's just not getting through to them, go on to the next one. Just, just put them on your not right now list and keep it moving. Like we work in a business where number one, um, you know, time is of the essence. Most of the time, like most of the time we have something going on in our business or opportunity where we're trying to meet a goal or we're trying to help somebody else meet a goal. Like we don't have time for people that are like, well, I'm going to think about it. Or, you know, my favorite is I don't have the cash right now. And then you see them downtown on Saturday and you're like, what? 
like, don't waste your time with those people. It's just going to, it's going to like affect you mentally. Just keep it moving, find more people. And y'all, I'm telling you right now, if you cannot find more people, then you are not adding enough people to your network every single day. I guarantee because I'm one of them that not everybody on this, this place right now, probably not everybody in the group or the, whoever watches the YouTube or listens to the podcast has 5,000 friends. I think Jess is probably the only one that's maxed out in friends. So if she's the only one that's maxed out in friends, we, we should have no problem creating more leads. Takes two seconds every single day to do a little tink, 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 and add more friends to your network. Yes. And my recommendation, thank you, Kristen, is to not have your page on private. That's just personally me. You do not have to agree with that. And you don't have to do that. But I'm going to just be brutally honest with you. If your page is set to private, you are going to have a harder time adding people to your network. Because I'm sure everybody can raise a hand. I can't see most of you, but if you did... I don't have people that are private. I don't know why, because I just feel like there's something weird going on there or it's a spam or a hack account. I just don't have people that are private. And I've done this with multiple people on our team where we've, they've had problems with engagement. I'll go to their page. I'm like, are you private? They're like, yeah, well, I've got, you know, this for my business or I'm, or this for my kid or blah, blah, blah. I get it. You know, if there's things that you want to keep private, maybe make a separate page that's private and you put pictures of your kids and it's just you and your family. Like, I get it. I'm not judging. Okay. But if you want to treat this like a business and add people to your network daily and be able to show them what you're doing and even following, right? People can't follow, just follow you if you're set to private because they're not friends with you. So if you set everything to private, someone just comes to your page, they just see a picture and they see private and that's it. Maybe they see like one post, depending on what you allow. So I just recommend going public. If there are things that you need to change, again, you can make two profiles. I have two. Lots of people have two. You can put all your stuff in private over there, all the things that you don't want anybody to see. And just so you guys know, if you're ever like weirded out about people looking at your pictures, this is just like a little tidbit tip. You can set your albums to only me. Like I have a ton of albums because I don't trust the cloud and I have 20,000 pictures of my kids. Um, I just said my kids. What the heck? I met my dog too. Okay. 20,000 pictures of my dog and child. Um, and I keep them in the cloud, right? But I also, if you go to Facebook and you go to your albums, you can click only me or only friends. Um, I have like ones on only me. It's like my storage spot, but that's where you can save all your stuff and feel comfortable and no one else can see it. Okay. So just remember that huge part of it being public so that you're allowed to be or so that you are allowing others to see what you have, especially if someone wants to come and see your page. Like, for example, I have in here one of my favorite places to get um, to get new friends from, to get new leads from is groups. So if I go in a group and I do something or put a comment or engage or put a question and everybody comes to my page and they can't see anything that I'm about, most of the time they're not going to friend me. But if they can come and see like, oh, this girl has fun and this girl does this and and she looks like she can maybe help me grow a business, I want to add her, add. So um, another thing I wanted to talk about was groups. It's very simple, okay? I've said it a million times. I'll say it to blue in the face. 90% of my customers, if not more, come from a group every single time. Whether they even just add me and I drip on them with content for the next six months or they come and they're like, what is it that you're about? Um, remember if you're like, like we were just saying, selling in your stories, and then you've got good content, attractive content on your page. And then someone gets into your, um, new network that you just added new lead, right? They might come and ask you, Hey, what's that that you're doing? I'd like more information on that. And you don't even know them. I think so many times too, we think of people as a destination. They may be a doorway. Okay. Maybe the person, and that's another, gen, that's another lead generation is referrals. Maybe the person's like, you know what? I don't really, I'm really busy or whatever, or, you know, maybe they're the, I don't have money, but I go out on Saturday person. Hey, that's fine, Aaron. You know what? I totally understand. Maybe you have some friends or family that you think would be interested. Would you be, you know, open to sharing my stuff with them? Answer is always no, if you don't ask, but it's not going to hurt. Maybe Aaron would like, you know what? Actually, I have a friend. Her name is Kristen. She is amazing at sales and she's always looking for something to do. I'll just give her your information. And boom, that could be the next like explosion in your business simply by referrals. So that's one thing too, that I love to do when it comes to lead generation is ask your customers. Even if you have a list of two customers, go ask them today. Hey, especially if your product opportunity has some kind of referral program where they can earn something for it. I don't know about y'all, but if I get like 5% off at target for telling a friend, I'm telling everybody trying to get that little 5%. It's like fun for me. So if you have something that you can offer as far as referrals, 
that you are sleeping if you're not asking people. Leverage your network. Leverage your network. It doesn't matter if it's big or small. You can leverage your social media. Go on your social media and say, hey, you know what? I work a business online. It's from anywhere. It's mobile. As long as you have Wi-Fi, you can hang out with your kids all day. Do you guys know? It might not be for you, but does anybody know someone who would be interested in it? I just gave myself an idea. At, your, at all your friends, okay? At all your friends on your page so that everybody gets a mention. And you never know. Maybe someone was gonna, is going to look at it and go, you know what? My daughter just got fired from her job. She's got a newborn baby at home. I should give something a shot tags her, sends her your information. We get too caught up in sometimes sitting around thinking that everyone's going to flock to us instead of getting creative on ways to create our own leads. And referrals is one of them. I know I'm, I sleep on it sometimes because I'm like, oh my gosh, we have so many uh, customers throughout the last seven years that I should just go back to and say, hey, maybe I, I know maybe it's been a while, but are you still open and interested? Or maybe you have somebody that's open and interested. Like that alone will create an entire lead generation list for you. Okay and groups. So my recommendation for groups is stay. I say, if you get overwhelmed easily, which I'm one of those people too, three to four groups, three to four solid groups that you know, you can show up in, um, very simple things. Like I'm in a ton of boy mom groups. I just stuck something in there today about what's your favorite way to, um, do a hot lunch. I could buy a bent gold box off Amazon. Like I'm not impaired. I know how, I know what Google is. I'm trying to create conversations and engagement with other people. So then they can come to my page and be like, oh, what did she end up picking, right? Did she get a bento box or did she take that one girl's, put it in foil or something? Whatever it might be, okay? Three to four that you can show up in consistently. And everyone here should have at least three to four things, hobbies. Like I'm pretty sure Aaron could join a group about sunbathing. I'm sure you could find people who love the sun or the summer. I don't think anyone loves the sun more than you and my grandma, Aaron. Um, but simple things like that, maybe an exercise group, an accountability group, something like that, where people are getting up every day. It's like, hey, you could go on some of those groups and be like, I'm just looking for an accountability. I'm not even joking, you guys, actually. There is, um, we live in Holly, Michigan. There's a Holly, Michigan group. And there's a guy that goes in there once a week asking for accountability partners to go walking with him in the morning. And one person commented, they were like, sir, I am like, they said like, I'm jealous of your um, friendliness that you're just willing to meet someone random at five o'clock in the morning downtown to go walking with. But that like such a great way to meet people or an accountability. I don't know if I would do that. That's a little early for me, um, especially for conversations. But just think about stuff like that. You can even look inside these groups and see questions that people have done. And if it's super successful and they got a lot of comments, just copy the question, go into another similar group and ask the same question, get those same results. Um, whoo, I want to leave you guys with, I was all over the place with my notes, um, creating valuable content. Oh, showing up on more than one social media platform. I'll leave you guys with this. Cause I know we're at nine 31. I feel like I talk really fast too. Um, yes, there is a recording. So don't worry in case you need to go back. Um, but showing up on more than one platform. And I mean that as a way not to freak you out, but if you want more leads and more eyes on you, the best way to do that is to repurpose your content on other platforms. I'm not saying you have to go make like a TikTok, a separate reel, and then a Facebook Live, right? You can shortcut your live videos. You can um, batch up content. You can do the ones that are like um, in the middle where you stitch somebody's content. I mean, y'all, if you're on the platform and you're not creating content on it, you're just wasting your time. I'm just being honest with you. But there are so many platforms. I would say stick with the top three, Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok, wherever you feel most comfortable, especially if you're on TikTok and you're making TikToks, save it and make it into an Instagram reel. Very simply done. And repurpose. And you're in two places instead of one. So just think about that too. When you're creating leads, like, am I doing everything I can to generate more leads, to generate more people? Or am I just posting and hoping that people are going to come and say, oh my gosh, I want to be a part of your opportunity. I want to join you. If that works for you, please let me know. Cause then I'll just walk off a cliff somewhere. I'll say I lied to you for all these years. Um, but it's, it's not working as well as it, as it normally does. Once in a while, I'll make a good post and someone will say, hey, I'm in, right? But that's because I'm constantly showing up I'm constantly going live. I'm constantly showing or sharing what I have to offer, lifestyle, product, all that kind of stuff consistently uh, in multiple places. And then when I add people, like when I get a TikTok going, I'm like, hey, add me on Facebook. That's where I show up most often or where I you know, have most content. And then I get them over there. They're checking out my stories. They're checking out my page. Next thing you know, they're like, hey, what is it exactly that you do? 
right? So hopefully today this what gave you some ideas for more lead generation. If you've got to plan, do, review, I want to end every episode I do with that. If you've got to plan, do, review, then do it. Plan what you're about to do, do it, and then review it. Maybe you just need to start with reviewing going, oh, okay, this is not working. Or I'm just showing up on Facebook, I'm making a post, I'm jumping off, and I'm wondering why no one's messaging me. Maybe you need to get a little bit further into your conversations. It's okay if you don't post for a week, but you're having a ton of conversations in your messenger. That's perfectly, that's almost even better. So many people get caught up in this, like, I need to just post. You actually need to just talk to people as much as you can, as much as you possibly can. And that will create more people asking questions. So thanks for hanging out as always. Like I said, it's recorded. We're going to have all this stuff. I'm going to work on getting all of our latest episodes up on our podcast. You can find us on Spotify. Um, I believe we'll be on Apple too, but um, I'll start sharing the podcast in there. So if you're going throughout your day, yeah, girl. Um, if you're going throughout your day and you just want to hear it again or share it with somebody or you missed a morning, we'll have all those available to you guys. Um, thanks for always hanging out. Go crush your day. See you next time.